Hi, I'm Joshua Finn from JNH Aerospace. Today we're going to talk about the uh, cabin model I recently used to break a record. Um, got enough requests about, you know, what in the world is this thing to uh, justify, well, okay, we'll, we'll put together a, a build video. Not a build video. <laughs> yeah, right. No build videos for this. Sorry, guys. Um, so, this part was actually made for the airplane. This is a, uh, an F1D wing I built. I covered it with uh, polymicrofilm, so it's, uh, it was much too heavy to use for F1D. I thought I could get away with it, and, well, it didn't work out. Uh, so as you can see here, we've got an offset wing uh, mounted up here on, uh, on posts, and because the mounts are on a curved surface here, I have this one come up and then bend over so I can get, get uh, equal offset on them. And we'll explain a little bit about what the whole purpose of this entire thing is here in a minute. Um, and then I've got a tail boom uh, at the back. Uh, so the rules specify that the rubber motor has to be enclosed entirely in a covered fuselage. It uh, used to not require that rule, but a few people decide, oh, well, we'll just make a rolled tube fuselage and then have some, some little glob somewhere along the length of the fuselage to enclose the required uh, cross-sectional area. And I've got the stab tilted way too much. Um, this is just a demo, so I'm trying to not get too ridiculous. Uh, if you can't tell, um, these are really, really, really fragile. Um, now, this one is quite a bit stronger than um, uh, Joe Bilgrey's cabin that's in the AMA Museum up in Muncie. Um, but it's still a pretty considerable deal. Um, so, one of the rules for a cabin is that it has to take off uh, basically under its own power, but it can be a two point rest. Um, and there we go. This thing will stand up on its own. Um, let's see here. And we'll get the prop on the front of it. It's going to take me some finagling here. As you can see, tell, that landing gear is just strong enough. I'm not fussing with this much longer because it's kind of ridiculous. Close enough. Anyway, I need to deal with that because you are required to demonstrate that it'll stand up on its own for the uh, for the rules. Uh, so the way this works is long ago uh, in competitions they wanted airplane model airplanes to look like real airplanes. So. They said, since everybody's trying to build these little stick fuselages, we'll have a cross-sectional area requirement. So from the propeller bearing to the back, uh, the furthest back extent, aft extent of the airplane is considered the length of the airplane. And then you, multiple, you square the length, so length squared divided by 100 is the minimum cross-sectional area of the fuselage. And uh, about 20, uh, almost 30 years ago, they added the rule that the, the part that covers it has to be, um, the, the rubber motor has to be entirely inside and, and whatnot, because the planes were diverging from what they'd been intended to be. Uh, stabilizer area, over 50% of the wing area counts as wing area, which is important because it's a maximum of 150 square inches of wing area. Um, so this w is what was formerly class C cabin. There was also a class B cabin flown somewhat uh, a little bit in the 1930s. And I believe if you go on Outer Zone, you can find Lawrence Smith Lines uh, late 1930s cabin model. If you're looking to get into this event, I recommend building that airplane. I have built it. It flies quite quite well. It's smaller because it's class B. It's only 100 square inches, but it would still be competitive. Um, so this one is uh, 2.6 grams, almost 2.7. Um, most guys are uh, in the low, uh, below 1.5 grams. So this is a heavy airplane, um, but it's got all the latest tech, you know, variable pitch prop and whatnot, and that makes up for it. Now, several people have asked about how do you load the rubber motor into this airplane. So glad you asked. 
This is where it gets a little more complicated. So, before I start winding, stay put, Link. Just stay. We're going to mount this guy on the table here. And you say, what in the world are you doing? Well, just wait and see. Let me move that out of the way. Um, I'm not going to put this thing up on a full rubber motor. I'm just going to put it up on a partial. If I can even find a fitting for the rubber motor. Ah, there it is. So, this one, there are lots of inefficiencies in how I designed this airplane. And folks will just have to kind of deal with it. This, this airplane was never intended to be a record attempt airplane. It's just that it turned out good enough. The tail, the tail boom, all that, uh, even the prop came off uh, F1D spare parts and whatnot. And my wife is, never mind, she'll slap me if I say anything, so I won't mm -hmm. say anything. Wow. So much hate. Alright, so now what I'm going to do, I've got this stick, it's got a hook on each end here, and a long thing right here. This is the sketchy part of flying this airplane. So I've got, this is a quarter motor because I didn't want to wind up a full motor. You see we've got our little extension clip back here. I've got a loop for that hook. You'll understand why in a minute. I've got a hook for the O-ring. Set our box down out of the way. Take the prop off of the airplane. You can see there's this funky looking harness down inside the airplane. This is not the best way to do this. The best way would be to have that carbon peg far enough back that it can support everything. And I could just loop it through. And instead, I've got that loop on that harness and I have hooked that in. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop that loose. Anybody who's been around cabins knows that when you hear clicking sounds like that, that's terrifying. It raises your blood pressure. But, that's because I had things on the wrong side there. Now we just load the um, motor onto the prop shaft. So far the fuselage is under zero load. Now, it's under full load just by relaxing that. So now I can re remove this airplane. Let's see, this turns left. Eh, we'll, we'll at least give you a takeoff demo here. Or I'm going to attempt to give you a takeoff demo. And then we'll just end it from there. But, alright. So I set this guy down on a two-point rest. And away it goes. And you can see it's showing a little bit of a climb here attempt to get it out of my wake, or not. Come here, you silly thing. There we go. So you can see, it's flying. Prop is all out of whack. And all that jazz. Um, so I guess the bottom line at the end of the day is why do we care? Well, we care for several reasons. One, it's a beautiful airplane. Number two, People have been flying this class of airplanes since at least 1932. Uh, this is a U.S. rules class. Uh, if you were to take an airplane from 1932, it would, it would meet the rules that we currently fly, um, and it would be fairly competitive if you updated the covering materials and whatnot. Uh, planes from the uh, 1934 and onward, any of those, if you built them, covered them with plastic film, uh, they'd be competitive nowadays if you put a variable pitch prop on them. So anyway, uh, kind of complicated airplane, but I hope some of you out there will at least try them. You don't, I mean, this one's, this one's built kind of beefy, um, so give it a try. I think uh, even at 3.5 grams, you'd be pretty competitive, and that's, that's not that hard to build. So anyway, see you all later.